What's up, everybody? Jason here for jazbeescasebreaks.com. 2023 Topps Chrome Hobby 2 Case 24 Box Break number five. Pick your team just sold out. Man, we've been doing a lot of these. It's been a lot of fun. Let's continue breaking them. So this sold out early this morning. Aaron Billings, like at 7 a.m. Pacific, got the uh, Dodgers. So thanks to him for selling it out. Again, I got one case here. I got another case right here. This camera, hello. So I have that camera facing kind of like halfway so you can see everything here because sometimes I do stack all the picker team, uh, all the boxes up to like over here so you guys can see that too as well. Um, yeah, let's get this going. Also too guys, uh, that jumbo, we were gonna do it here but I think Nick was able to acquire some Topps Chrome over there at the show, jumbo. So he actually ended up doing the jumbo for you guys. So, I can break the other jumbos now. Uh, discrepancy? Okay. Well, obviously, that's probably a typo. Thanks for letting me know. It's basically whatever, uh, whatever the, uh, yeah. It's usually whatever the title says, but I think that is even wrong. The title is actually wrong, it looks like. Yeah, because inside of it actually is correct. And then the top of it says 10 box mixer, but then put 10 and 10. So yeah, obviously it should be five and five. I mean, I don't think this should be a deal breaker for some people because that would be super, super expensive, even more, but I'll change that right now. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, obviously, some people could. If that's the case, obviously, if that if you thought it was gonna be 20 boxes, then you know, I would request a refund. But I'm pretty sure people understood it right. Usually, the title is always the right, correct one, and in a sense, the title is like 50% correct. 10 box mixer, but then it says 10 and 10, so obviously, that part is wrong. Thanks, though, man. But yeah, if, it, if that's like a deal breaker for you guys, you're like, oh man, I thought I was gonna get 20 boxes, then you can request a refund, and we'll t refund it for you, but. This time around, the title was half right, and then the bio was perfectly right. It's five and five. So, as of lately, we have been actually doing those kind of two-case mixers, uh, like we have with, uh, like we have with the uh, the baseball hit parade. We've been doing that kind of five sapphire, five emerald, uh, as of lately, which I think has been kind of fun because you kind of get a mix of two different products and potentially two different tiers, you know? So, chances that some even bigger hits. Ted, you said you're in New Jersey, right? So, like New Jersey, like closer to Atlantic City, New Jersey, or New Jersey closer to like New York? Post NYC, gotcha. So are you a Giants Jets fan, or do you somehow root for the Eagles?
Yeah, I was gonna say, if you're closer to New York City, it's kind of a, kind of a bit of a drive. About two hours plus, right? Kind of like us driving to like San Diego a little bit, two hours or so. Ah, gotcha. So I was gonna say, if you're, if you're closer to like New Jersey, Atlantic City, Philly, I was like, somebody do me the favor, if they're like in the Philadelphia area, Go hit up the uh, pro shop for me at the link. Kelly Green jerseys are dropping on Monday. In person first, I think, and then think on online. On uh, at some point. A buddy of mine actually, I used to work here. His name's Axel. Maybe some of you guys remember. He actually has been working with my cousin with his like a uh, telecom company, and they have this big, big uh, project out there in New Jersey right now. And he's been staying out there for like the last year really. Every like two months, every month or so he comes back for the weekend, but, but uh, yeah, he's been out there for a while now almost. And uh, I told him, man, you gotta go, you gotta go to the link for me. <laughs> All right, we can agree on that, right? We can agree on that. Cowboys no bueno. That's cool, man. You grew up watching the 49ers with like them winning all the Super Bowls, like 80s, 90s. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, that's kind of what kind of what influenced a lot of fans here in Southern California. Yeah, I get it. Obviously. You know, 49ers are a California team, Cowboys in Dallas, but I feel like, yeah, like it's a lot of Cowboy fans in the 80s or mainly 90s, honestly. Just the Cowboys exploded, right? Winning those cover Super Bowls with like Aikman and all of them, they're just so, so popular that just grew a whole new generation of Cowboys fans, really. But that's just what happens, right? I mean, same thing with the Patriots, probably, right, in the 2000s? Late 2010s with Brady before he left. Before he left, and you grew up in Texas. Oh yeah, that was really hard, dude. Yeah. Yeah, for me with the Eagles, obviously there wasn't really a team in LA at the time, and you know I, I didn't really want to join the Raider Nation with my cousins. Really, I have two twin twin uh, uncles, right, and. Uh, both obviously look alike, right? Um, and uh, one of them's a Seahawks guy, one of them's a 49er guy. So I always got a little influenced by them. So I was always watching a lot of 49ers football growing up because one of my uncles lived across the street from me. And, uh, you know, obviously still didn't decide to be a 49ers fan. It wasn't until, I guess I always tell you, I really got attracted to the Eagles because of my... Uh, my nephew's dad at the time, my brother-in-law at the time. He liked the Eagles around the Cunningham, and I just love the color green, honestly. But once I got to see McNabb play, that just kind of changed it for me. And I was so pumped, you know, when T.O. left the 49ers, came to the Eagles even better. Really, really magical season that sucked, ending sucked, but still fun season to relive, honestly, still to this day. But now, you know, a few years removed from Carson Wentz, who would have thought, right? I didn't think the Eagles would be able to rebound that quick and potentially, you know, win a Super Bowl again. But definitely excited for the future. I think for you then, Ed, that's, I hear Brock Purdy's back at training camp with no limitations, no nothing. So looking like he should be the day one starter, maybe. Do you believe in Purdy, Ed? Fine, fine, fine. Yeah, right? It's barring any injury setbacks, right? I mean, he has to be the starter, right? Seems like they are convinced. I think he had a great season last year. I think, obviously, you know, 
it benefits having a good team behind him. But, you know, he just made the right reads and hardly made many mistakes. So, I mean, obviously he's kind of, you know, kind of earned that trust in the locker room, really. And like I said, it doesn't matter whether you're drafted a first rounder or, you know, right? Uh, you know, what is that last one? Uh, Mr. Irrelevant, really. I mean, you still got it. Even undrafted, I guess, right? You still got a chance. It doesn't mean anything. But, yeah, I, I don't know what's going to happen with Trey Lance. I mean, obviously, you guys brought in Sam Darnold, too, right? I mean, I think Darnold was kind of more like the, all right, well, you guys are, were saying that Purdy, Purdy might be out the few first few weeks, first few months, maybe, right? So... Obviously, maybe they don't fully trust Trey Lance, so they're like, let's bring in a guy like Sam Darnold that's, you know, bounce around, but obviously has proven that he could fill in for a couple. Ooh, look at that. Mike Trout short print. I was wondering why that was backwards, but, uh, Angel, Stephen Carney. So, you know, I just feel bad for Trey Lance, man. I feel like he wasn't, like, he, he was given the chance to be the starter, but then it was just ripped away, obviously, once his injury happened, and it's just, that was it. Just moved on, you know? So hopefully he can show how good how good he could be in preseason, right? And then maybe get a chance, or if not, maybe get a chance to be traded. Really, I think obviously for you and your Trey Lance collection, I'd assume that you probably want to trade, unless Purdy goes down and, and Sam Darnold doesn't work out and then he gets a shot. That's what I'm saying. Like he's a guy that just hasn't had enough reps and. It just sucks that they kind of moved on so quickly. But right, NFL, not for long. I guess that's kind of the same. There's... But, yeah, I, I feel for the guy, obviously. And the North Dakota State quarterbacks, though, right? <laughs> Yeah, no. I don't think they're going to end up trading him, but the only thing I can see is that if obviously some injuries happen and for some reason he looks like he's going to shine and looks like he could be potentially a, a guy, maybe trade him. But they, I don't think they trade him for anything high. But yeah. But see, that's my thing. If you're not going to trade Lance, if you're not going to get a high pick for Lance anyways now, what makes you think you're going to get it later? Are you just hoping that maybe he does play and, and show that he could play? Cause that's my thing like you might get a desperate team that want to give it a little bit more now than later but i don't know tricky situation though i guess I'm looking forward to our rematch, though, man. Obviously, you know, it didn't really go the way for you guys in the NFC Championship game with Purdy going down, but I, uh, we have a, I have a cousin that works here, which is my, my, uh, my wife's cousin. He's a big 49ers guy, and, <laughs> you know, it's just... <laughs> I just remember he didn't message me at all that week. Usually, he's always texting me, talking about games and 49ers this, and that week must have been really hard. Oh, for sure. For sure. I mean, obviously, look, I'm a big Eagles guy. I didn't grow up in Philly. I didn't, you know, I didn't. I don't have, like, maybe the Philly, Philly mindset. Like, I'm not obnoxious in the sense that I want to just yell out stuff. I feel like Boston and Mike, him kind of being from Philly, he definitely acts like a guy from Philly. But I'm a big Eagles fan, and obviously I'll defend the Eagles no matter what, but... I'm not, I don't, I don't like to say, just blurt out things out loud if they don't really make sense or stuff like that. And there's times where, obviously every fan base has those guys, you know, but obviously Eagles for the most part always get like bad mouth the most. And it's mainly Cowboy fans really saying that, but there's a lot of good Eagles fans out there, guys. Don't worry. Don't, there's a lot of bad eggs in every, in every organization that make the whole fan base for that team look so bad, but 
It's not always the case. Yeah, that's right. It's not called Twitter no more, right? It's called X. I'll never call it X, to be honest. Never. Yeah, I mean, look, <laughs> I, I, that's another guy, man. Michael Parsons talks a lot, but the times he's actually gotten beaten and and he's kind of kept quiet, he, you know, he, he he's respectful, though, in the sense, once they lose, you know, he's just like, damn, just lost, all right? Good team, but he's one of those guys that will obviously talk a lot of smack and back it up for the most part, but I just feel like it's so funny because, like, I don't know, I hope a lot of the teams – do what the Eagles did to the Cowboys last year in the sense of basically make Micah Parsons make the decision to stay with the quarterback or stay with the running back. I mean, that's basically what they exposed last year. And Micah Parsons was frustrated playing against the Eagles because they did it so well. And obviously, you know, offensive line, right? Going up against Lane Johnson, obviously, is a big task. But, you know, against the Eagles, he didn't do too well, honestly. All the Cowboys that end up winning that late uh, in the season game with uh, Turner Minshew in there. But uh, I, I, I have a ton of respect for the Cowboys. I hate the fan base, but I have a ton of respect for them. I, I think they are one of the teams to beat in the NFC this year. But I just think there's a lot of people out there just forgetting that obviously you have another team in the same division. You know, that is just as good, if not maybe better, in my opinion and just went to the Super Bowl, you know? While they, on the other hand, haven't even made it past the divisional round, you know? So, I think for me, it's like, until they get to an NFC Championship game, you know, are they, are they really the team to be? Yeah, maybe they'll have one of the best records in the NFC this year. You know, maybe they'll be a number one seed or a number two seed, but it's kind of been the same old story for the last I don't know what, almost 30 years, right? Since 95, 96. <laughs> Just haven't been able to get to the championship game or Super Bowl. If anything, I'm, I'm more nervous about like the 49ers, obviously, right? I mean, they're a super, super stacked team all around and they've proven to get to the Super Bowl a few times already and the NFC championship game in the last X amount of years, so. Will be interesting, I guess. Tyler Freeman. Yeah, I'm really excited for football. I know this is a baseball break, but I'm really excited for football. Volpe. Rutschman. Michael Harris. Jake McCarthy to two ninety nine. Wow, and Abby Rutschman to start us off. Two four, uh, 234 out of 499 for the Baltimore Orioles and Chris Butler. Look at that. Stepping up and taking the Orioles and rewarded, buddy. Very nice, man. Oh, man. I didn't get a monster box. Hold on one second, guys. I'm going to grab one.
All right, Xbox. Royce O'Neal. Trevor Story error. No, I've seen the uh, Trey Turner error where there's a rookie card on his on his uh, rookie logo on his card, but there's a Trevor Story error too. Which one's that one? Buddy Kennedy for the uh, Arizona Diamondbacks. Diamondbacks is Sean Manick. And look at that, another short print, Francisco Alvarez. So earlier we got that Mike Trout short print and now we have that Francisco Alvarez short print. A nice one there for the Mets, going to Ryan. Good start for a couple of short prints. So there's some weird lettering on the back, like what to look out for. Let me see when I find one right now, like where at on the back. Gunnar Henderson. We got Logan Webb, the Giants, Corbin Carroll, get your shit together Carroll. You got an autograph for this one? Oh yeah, we got Buddy Kennedy, right? Yeah. <laughs> On the back left side, it says form really. Yeah, there's been a couple of errors here in this product, but sometimes they are planned errors, right? Just like in other products, and then sometimes they're not planned errors. But I have to think that these aren't planned. Spencer Torkelson. Chapman. I did. I pulled a taco fracker in the first break of the release day with our jumbo Pikachu number one. And I pulled a, the frozen sub zero, whatever, refractor, negative refractor, like in the second or third. Then that's been it. Not seen a taco fracture since then or a negative. Rutschman. With
Springer. Yeah, I think almost every team has at least one top refractor. I think mo I think most teams have multiple, to be honest. So there's always that possibility, but they're super, super short printed, obviously. Out of fives, I mean, not really many of them out there, right? Kyle Tucker? Three fifty. Kyle Mitchell. Schwarber. To 50. Cal Mitchell. Two uh, variations and then Adley Rutschman as the big one.
Alright guys, and it looks like we are down to six and five left in the next two jumbo cases. And we're stuck at 16 in the next 24 box top. So hopefully maybe we can squeeze in a jumbo today. Either nine or ten. And also finally do that finest, I feel like. Finest, I think, obviously, like I said, has you know been sitting there for a little bit. I know with all this tops chrome. Not many people are really into it to potentially take those teams straight up, so we put it in a pack filler. And as you can see, we're almost halfway through the pack filler for only 20 bucks. Uh, and almost, you know, 12 out of the 30 are at least going to get a team. Now, honestly, every team is above the spot price minus the Giants. And the Giants were only ones like were literally like $18. So they're just a dollar less or so than the spot price. But everybody else, I think, was at least like $30 or $40. And as high as the Dodgers, which I think the Dodgers... Uh, were well, how much were the Dodgers? Yeah, they were like 80 bucks. Now remember, it is just one case, and obviously finest, only eight boxes, and not too crazy of a price for finest. So a little bit cheaper than Topps Chrome, but still equally as fun, guys. And uh, we can get that knocked out today with that pack filler. And then that break also is probably like 30 minutes to 30, 35, so. And definitely still squeezing one of those, put another jumbo and nice, look at that. Brett Beatty. Variation and it's number to 99. That's two variations for the Mets now. You had the Francisco Alvarez and now you have the Brett Beatty. Nice break so far, Ryan with the Mets. I wonder I was sneezing a lot. There's so much dust right here. I gotta uh, use the lint roller right now after I'm done.
First case, done with it. Alright, we got Carlos Perez. And Drew Waters. Julio, nice little color right there. To 99.
Longoria to 50. Caleb Killian, 250. Cubby, Spencer. Scherzer to 189. Mm -hmm. Carlos Perez. And nice Bo Jackson. First time pulling one of these of Bo Jackson. Ultraviolet All Stars for the Kansas City Royals. John Royals. Hunter Brown. Wood Richardson for the Twins. Alrighty, guys. One more box. Wilson Contreras to 250. Brian Servin, a little color match purple speckle. 
That's to 299. Rockies kept. There you go. Bryce Harper Phillies. So three fifty. buyback again if that's what you're asking so last year obviously uh, the product came out after I believe or actually you know what I think they might have no they announced the, the MVP buyback after I believe the MVPs were announced right but basically this year right whoever ends up winning MVP on the NL and AL if you have any base cards of theirs from this product I think base cards get to $20 at your local card shop at participating card shops. So basically, you would bring that base card to a local card shop that's participating and they'll give you $20 cash to you know to spend, right? If you uh, get a refractor of the MVP, you'll get $40. And if you get like a serial numbered card from you know, let's say $299, you get $100. And I think the max is like $100 or $200. Um, so, Obviously, right now, I, I think it's pretty pretty set in stone that, you know, Shohei Otani is going to win the MVP for the AL, right? So, basically, whoever's buying the Angels probably rack up at least maybe five, six Otani base cards. So, that's probably $100 back there, at least. You get a couple refractors. Boom. There's a, there's a couple $40 cards there. And then, of course, any numbered cards could get over to 1000 or over $100. So, you know... Team like the Angels, potentially like Braves with Acuna right now. Braves probably are a good team to get in this. Yes. Basically, you want to hold on to any chrome card base or color refractor that you think has a chance to win the, the, the MVP. Obviously, you know, if you buy like, not to say anything bad, but like the Royals or A's, right? But I mean, I don't think any of their players are going to win MVP. So, you know, obviously you can probably sell and get rid of those. But basically... You know, I think that's probably another reason why the Angels are selling pretty fast. Not just because you have Otani and Mike Trout auto opportunities, but more just because Otani is most likely going to win MVP. And obviously Braves with Acuna, I think Dodgers are a good chance too. I mean, obviously, I think Acuna right now is still leading probably the MVP race. But but yeah, I mean, I think, I think Freddie Freeman has a really good chance. I think his stats are very, very similar to Acuna. And... You know, just minus like stolen bases. You know, Mookie Betts obviously is having a good season as well. So, you know, like I said, I, I don't think the Dodgers are a bad buy in this. Because we work on Saturday, why do you want to go see Real Madrid? But yeah, NL, maybe Pete Alonso. I think the NL is a little bit more wide open in the sense that there's still enough time for stuff to happen, right? Maybe potentially injuries can happen and that changes the race. You know, maybe a, a player just comes out of nowhere and that is probably in the top five and just starts raking and taking over and then all of a sudden it changes. So yeah, you know, obviously. So if you have a chance to get like the Braves, you have the Dodgers, you know, maybe like you know, I'd say maybe the Mets. Any, anybody you think that has an opportunity of winning the MVP, basically try to uh, get them. I think for the AL, I mean, obviously, if Otani, I, I think the only way Otani doesn't win, I think he still wins anyways, but if Otani were to get injured and be out for the season, then I assume that's probably the only chance that, that everybody else has in the AL. So I think the NL is definitely the best bet. Now, this is the one thing that I was talking about last year that I think this year, I wonder how it's going to be. But basically, right, let's just say Otani does win the MVP. And everybody is trading in all the base cards, the refractors, the, the numbered cards in that are qualifying for it. 
I wonder if that raises the price of some of those cards because there won't be many of them out there. Now, there'll be many base out there, maybe refractors, but I wonder if some of the numbered cards that they do accept, will the price go up on those because, you know, because uh, there won't be many of those out there. Uh, Brad, I don't think the spreadsheet has been updated. Which spreadsheet? And yeah, I think right now Acuna is definitely favored, but I don't think he's a clear-cut winner, though. I'm still rooting for some of my Dodger guys. Because like I said, minus the stolen bases, a couple of those Dodgers players are having a really, really good season like Freddie Freeman. So, I think the AL is pretty much locked in, but the NL is still, I think, a little... A little open. And there's still plenty of baseball out there. So, Lewis, uh, I was going to do that here, but I think Nick was trying to scramble to do another break at the National, and he was able to to find a case of, of Jumbo. So, Nick and Joe did that earlier today. Now, to be honest, I don't know if they uploaded the video. I didn't check, but I know when they went live on Thursday, they uploaded those breaks that they broke there. So, um See if you can find it, and if you don't see it, then I will have to ask them if they can upload it, because obviously they were breaking at the PWCC breakers, uh, breaker booth, so I'm not sure how that is working. But uh, I personally didn't do that today. They did it earlier this morning, like at 11.30. But, oh, there it is, yeah. Joe uploaded it like three hours ago. It's right here, buddy. There you go. So yeah, they ended up just taking that break just because it was already down to one left and someone sold it out this morning. So they're like, yeah, let's just take it. Let's just, uh, let's just take that one, so. Hopefully you guys hit some nice stuff on that case. Like I said, we're scheduled to break here, but all good. You guys got to break that early and obviously more time for us to break here, so. No problem, yeah, yeah, it's in our video section, guys. So if you go to videos and click the latest, not popular or oldest, you'll notice right there. It is right there.
was worked down. I think we can safely say that your issue has nothing to do with the next words most of it. Continue on. Pull a taco refractor.
Wow. One more box. So looks like I got about 10 orders. Looks like stuff is potentially moving. Um, five and five left in the jumbos, nine and, uh, nine and 10. Looks like we're down to 15 left in the next, in that pack filler for, for finest. So we'll probably do that finest today as well. Fractor. Riley Green. And nice Sanga. Matt's having a really good break. To 150. Uh, Ryan. That's three variations in this two case. So we had two in the last one. Now here's our first one in this case. Very nice. Yankees. Uh, that is Jacob. Chattinger. Max Meyer. 
250. Sango this time color to 99. And we got a relic here for the twins. Minnesota. Pat Wolf. Contrast. Thirty five. And Sosa for the White Sox. Jeremy Olson. Here we go. Next box. Last box and we'll go six. And Acuna to 50 gold. Nice one there for the Braves, Jared. Royce Lewis. Oh, 
And Encarnacion. <laughs> I was asleep. Call Tucker. Alrighty guys, six more boxes to go here. Yeah, I think the only thing we have sold out right now is one of those little uh, legacy box fillers. And then uh, we can continue pushing other stuff. Like the finest, like some more Topps Chrome. Jumbo edition I would say, just cause it's a little closer right now.
want some pack stackings for the rest? No, no, I'm good already. I, this is the last of it right here. Thanks. Cool. Evan should have told me that like an hour ago. <laughs> it's all good. We're basically down here anyways. If I have to do another double header so then if he's here, maybe I'll take his help. Two boxes here, guys.
All right, guys. Here we go. Last six boxes. I feel like this half has been pretty. It's been okay, but I feel like just minus that like short print, I feel like the autographs haven't been the craziest yet. So definitely looking forward to some more nicer autos in this half. Here we go, guys. We got Bobby Wood Jr. to 99. Trey Turner. Relic, negative. Hernandez for the Rangers. Texas Rangers. John. All right, next box, we got four left. For 25. And Iga Rosario gold to 50. That looks nice. Padres, Kevin Thompson. Dermis Garcia. Spencer Steer, Cincinnati Reds, Sean Mallory.
Nice Jordan Walker though, to 99. Ken Ball. Two more boxes, guys. Langliers. Good luck. Oakland A's. A's is Stephen Carr. Shohei Otani. Now this might this might be over hundred dollars right here. I forget what variations they're willing to take, but I remember numbered cards were like over hundred dollars to two hundred dollars. I think. So that's a nice one right there. And there's 40 bucks potentially right there as well, Shohei Otani. All right, so um, let's do a quick little recap here. I feel like the first case was definitely much better than the second, but we still got some nice hits overall though. So again, obviously, Tons and tons of numbered cards, colors, right? So, obviously, like I said, a lot. And uh, let's top load a couple of these autos here. Alrighty guys, so here we go, quick little recap. Detroit Tigers there, Lester, Hernandez for Texas, Rosario to 50 gold for the Padres, Steer for the Reds, Massey refractor to 499 for Kansas City, Ruiz to 499 refractor for Oakland, Tobolea for the Rockies, Vientos for the Mets, Encarnacion for the Marlins to uh, 199, Sosa Blue, Ray Wave to 150 for the Sox, Walter Chuck for the A's, Relic there, Carlos Square for the Twins, Variation there of Aaron Judge, Senga to 150 for the Mets, Waters for the Kansas City Royals, Lester again there for the Detroit, Killian for the Cubs to 250 purple, Perez for the White Sox, Burdick blue for the Marlins, uh, Servin for the Colorado Rockies, we got a Bo Jackson, Ultraviolets, Brett Beatty, that's a uh, image variation to 99 color, Mike Trout image variation as well as Francisco Alvarez for the Mets, Buddy Kennedy for the A's, Adley Rushman Refractor, 
autographs for four ninety nine. Uh, Will Brennan, Weimar for the uh, Brennan for the Guardians, and then Milwaukee Brewers there for Weimar. Cal Mitchell, Cal Mitchell for the Pirates, and there's that show the Tony numbered card. So there you go, guys. That was the break again. This was doubleheader number five. Number six is in the store. Jaspiescasebreaks.com.